report back, that's fine too. We have no secrets, just report truthfully what you saw and heard here. The Labour Party have already planted a bug. It's got, uh, it's got eight legs and it's a very, very large tarantula. If you can see it there. If someone could keep an eye on it for me, that would be helpful. Because I don't like it getting too close. Um, the campaign has begun, indeed. We were the first uh, horse in the race. As uh, soon as the... Together with many here in Bradford, and with the assistance of many more, we broke that siege over and over and over again with Viva Palestina. Am I supposed to be embarrassed about that? Is that supposed to be a disqualification for sitting in Parliament for Bradford? Well, they might have a case if they were working really successfully on the local issues. But when I have to walk around a giant bomb crater in the center of the city, past the pawnbrokers and the pawn shops, these people are neither doing anything for Gaza or for Bradford. And they want to criticize me for my work on Palestine. They say oh, he's only interested in the war. Well, they never say which one because I've lost count of the number of wars that these people have put us into. And don't forget that. When you see the blood flowing, literally flowing in the streets in Kandahar, where an American sergeant machine guns 16 people, 12 of them, women and children, just in the last 72 hours or so. Don't forget who sent these armies into Afghanistan. It was Labour who sent them there. It was the Liberal Democrats who supported it. And it was the Conservatives who asked for it to happen even quicker and even more brutally. I don't know what Imran Hussein's view on the war is. I never heard it. And I doubt if any of you did. But whatever his view is, it was his party that done it. It was his party that invaded Iraq, even though millions of us, many of you, were on the streets of London. Two million on the 15th of February, 2003. Begging the government not to do this, not to commit this ridiculous, horrific blunder, as well as a crime. And they ignored us. Bradford MPs, not Marsha Singh, Bradford MPs actually voted for it to happen. And a million people are dead today as a result. A million Muslims, by the way, in Iraq are dead as a result of the decisions that these people took. When we, who didn't even know what we know now, told them that it was a, a war based on a lie that was going to end in disaster. And so it did. It was Labour that invaded Afghanistan. It was Labour that supported Israel when it attacked Lebanon and killed, thousands, killed and maimed thousands of people, practically destroyed the south of Lebanon. It was Tony Blair who sent the Royal Navy off the coast of Gaza to patrol, not to defend the refugees under bombardment, but to stop weapons reaching the Palestinian fighters in Gaza to defend themselves. Our ships, our navy, our taxes, supporting Israel in every crime that it committed. It was Blair and Brown that done it. So whatever Imran Hussein says, who you hear is going to vote Labour? How are you going to explain that on the Judgment Day if you believe in the Judgment Day as I believe? How are you going to explain that? That you had a choice on the 29th of March 2012 you could vote for the party that killed a million Muslims in Iraq, or you could vote for the man who led the campaign to stop the war. Who among at least the Muslim population will want to explain that one? But of course the opposition to the war and the support for Palestine goes much wider than the Muslim population in Bradford. Carl Dallas here is an absolute hero, stalwart, pillar of anti-war and pro-Palestinian work and he's wearing a cross around his neck. We have the basis of an ecumenical 
cross-community, inter-religious, multi-faith coalition here against war and occupation. Not least because if the country's got money, then spend it here at home rather than spend it on wars abroad. If we've got money, let's keep our own pensioners warm in the winter instead of setting fire to people in Afghanistan and in Iraq and threatening to do the same thing all over again in Iran. If we've got money, how come our students are going to be paying £9,000 a year for tuition fees to go to college or university? If we've got money, how come there's mass unemployment, mass cuts in public expenditure, unemployment and cuts which are only just beginning? The unemployment figures today showed a shameful figure of youth unemployment in this country of 22.5%, aged between 16 and 24, that's a quarter of all the young people in this country are on the dole, neither in college, university, training or work. And then they wonder why people riot. They wonder why people get into trouble with the police. They wonder how young people turn to drugs and drink. The devil finds work for idle hands and this government and this system has left millions idle. So if we've got money for nuclear weapons, we're about to spend another 80 billion pounds on new nuclear weapons. Why don't we scrap the nuclear weapons and spend the money here instead? Why don't we bring the soldiers home and spend the money here instead? Now, some people say, oh, these are not local issues. Of course they're local issues. Six soldiers gave their lives in Afghanistan just a week or so ago. Five of them aged less than 21 years old. Can you believe it? Think of your own children. Under 21. Their life's blood disappearing into the sands of Afghanistan. For what? What was achieved by their deaths? What was achieved by the other 400 deaths of British servicemen and women that have been killed in this war in Afghanistan? We know that the war is coming to an end. We know that the British and the Americans are announcing date after date, earlier and earlier, when they're going to scuttle out of there. We know that they've asked the Taliban to open a political office in Doha, in Qatar so they can have someone to surrender to. So all these people who lost their lives in this war, in order to get rid of the Taliban, we're about to give power back to the Taliban. So all that blood was spilled in vain. What's not local about that? These six soldiers were in the Yorkshire Regiment. One of them was from the city of Bradford. The money that they're spending is your money that could have been spent here. What's not local about that? It is local, but it's also national, and it's also international. They say that, well, Galloway went to Cairo on Saturday. I went to Cairo for one day on Saturday. Why? Because after two years and two months of having been deported by Hosni Mubarak, and declared persona non grata, the Egyptian government sent me a message that I could come last Saturday to visit Cairo, which I did, and I stood in Tahrir Square where the revolutionaries brought down the dictatorship. Do people in Bradford care about the fact that the great Egypt has managed to overthrow its tyrant and that the other Arabs are rising up to overthrow theirs? Of course they do. At least I hope they do. But the idea that this is a disqualification from being the Member of Parliament for Bradford is surely absurd. Indeed, if it was a disqualification, I wouldn't want the job. I'm interested in the local, the national, and the international. And I can speak about all of them. I was in Parliament for almost 25 years. I won Awards after awards as the best speaker, the best debater, and all of that. 
Do you think I would refuse to appear on a platform with another candidate? If he can't appear on a platform with me, how is he going to get on in Parliament? If he's scared to speak with me in Bradford, how is he going to get on in Parliament? It's really not rocket science. This man is not up to the job. I'm concentrating on him, not because he or his party are the worst in the race. They're probably not. I'm concentrating on him because I believe this is a two-horse race. I believe that either the local councillor or me is going to be elected on the 29th as the Member of Parliament. And people have to make a judgment as to whether they think he will do a better job for them or I will do a better job for them. Whether he'll make more of an impact or whether I'll make more of an impact. Whether you will be more proud of him or more proud of me. I hope that you make the judgment to back us on the 29th. Wassalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.